One, it was because obviously you come away with the game win, but you know that the series win isn't yours to take home. And even though I think I spoke to a few of the Queenslanders afterwards, and they said the same thing. They didn't know whether to be ebullient or excited or what they you know. So, but anyway, that, that was the rules that you know the way it played. I think it what to me what that really shows is there should be a game three. Unequivocally, there should be a game three. And I think 18,272 people in Townsville turned up and the noise was deafening, the atmosphere was amazing. And I'm pretty sure everybody afterwards is screaming for a game three. Is, is that the biggest, yes, crowd, biggest crowd that has been to a women's rugby league game ever? Uh, I don't know about women's rugby league game, but it's the biggest origin crowd we've ever had. You could, yeah, you could assume right. that. I would assume that, yes, that would be the case. I would assume, assume, that, yes, assume the, the audience, case. too, on television, watching. Huge. Over 1.1 1. 1 yeah. we had watched that game. So will it be a game three next year? Has that been declared? Nothing's been declared, but I think it's be, when it? you watch this, you look at that and you say there must be a game three. Yeah. It can't be any, we can't stay at two. There has to be a three. Well, it was silly. It was silly. I think from the point of view of first New South Wales had the shield mm. and the rules got changed to where they become about points. Normally, if you don't have the shield, you should have to win two games to get the shield. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, but from Queensland's point of view, they're in front of the game. And in that last 10 minutes, you could see they didn't just have to lead. They weren't just leading by four or six. They're actually leading by 14, mm. which changed the whole sort of scope of how they played as well. So yeah. at the end of the day, I think the one good thing out of it, Roy, I thought the first game, obviously, was very sloppy. Mm. But this game was an incredible standard. Well, we spoke about that. The conditions just were oh, so Oh, but they hadn't played. Game. The girls hadn't played. Yeah. Well, they hadn't even trained. A lot of them hadn't played uh, much of their state league competitions prior to this as well. So the fact that they're back at NRLW training between first origin and second origin, they're getting their hands on the ball a lot more frequently. They're just... It was... I agree, Freddie. It was a heaps better standard of game. And I think you saw right from the get-go, we made significant changes to the way that we played to start off game two. And you can just see the skill level that the women have on show. And I think we moved the ball around a lot, which I think surprised a lot of people. But what you said, Joey, the conditions suit that. That were the changes to move the ball? We were going to move the ball around, but first of all, we just wanted to punch the front door down. Um, what about standalone or playing before the men's, when that, do you think? That... That's a really good question. I think sometimes there are bonuses to playing double headers in that space, but then there are also real... We've shown that standalone, it can survive mm -hmm. and stand on its own two feet. So sometimes, you know, you don't want it to get lost in the noise of the men's game as well. You want it to have stand on its own and be able to be proud and upright the way it has been. And, uh, yeah, I think if, if it goes to three games, I'd love to see one as a double header, definitely. I, I, I do think as well, though, because you get, so say... Uh, for the week just gone, you have uh, the men's game mm -hmm. at Suncorp Stadium. So everyone who's in that vicinity or, you know, can travel where, you know, money's not an option for them. But then you also cater to people in other areas who might not be able to afford or get to mm. the men's game. Then they have the opportunity to go and see some state of origin. Absolutely. And I, I guarantee this, after last week... One game should always be held in Townsville. Mm. Always. Not just because I enjoy the winter in Townsville. It was beautiful. But the crowd were fantastic. And I knew that Townsville would turn up and support this game. And they did in droves. And I think, yeah, like I said, I think it was mm. 18,272. And I think 18,000 of them were Queensland fans. So. I ask a question. Why did Jesse Southall take so long to kick the goal? I'm not sure. I didn't speak to her afterwards like, about it. What was it. happening? Was there, were there... It seemed like something was happening. But... Yeah. I didn't know what was happening. It just seemed to take so long. And then I'm watching the clock. The clock hadn't stopped. No, and it doesn't stop until the ball goes mm. dead. So I didn't get a chance to talk to Jess about it afterwards. But, right. uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go over that. Do you think what you mentioned before, um, leading into Game 1, how there hadn't been a lot of footy played for the women just because of the way that the schedule is, would then it be wise to move the women's state of origin or do you like it having it here in this origin period? Well, if you have it at this origin period, then there's it's big origin buzz around the game as a whole. So that drives a lot of attention, eyeballs, all that sort of stuff. And where it sits now, because with men's origin, them having the Thursday off, uh, then you've got prime time slot available to have the game. Uh, however, what you can do, we can move NRLW. You can have the state league competitions acting as the feeding tube through, they play there and either they play NRLW or they play down in their state league competitions and then you can still have origin in that origin period. So it's a, it's a lot of decisions that need to be made around where it sits and what the calendar looks like.